So now I'm going to use R to conduct some T tests using some data I've been working with. I've been working with some inflation data for a number of countries. I'm going to focus on U.S. inflation and kind of see how some different points or different samples compare against one another. All right, so I've got the data set I've been working on, which has four countries' inflation. I'm going to turn it into a matrix and make inflation rates as log differences like I've done earlier. And you can see here that I've got my date row, or date column, excuse me, and then I've got Canada, Japan, UK, and US. I'm going to focus mostly on US and, and um, just kind of look at how different points compare. So one thing to notice, in 1974, uh, inflation was re really high compared to other years. Now, if you know anything about US policy, monetary policy, and inflation, there was an oil shock in 1973 that raised prices, there was high inflation through the 70s, and then it was brought down by a contractionary Fed policy where Volcker raised rates. And inflation has been pretty pretty low ever since. So we're going to look at that and see how inflation compares over different periods in time. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how this specific value in 1974 compares to the mean overall. All right. So we can see here the mean is 3.95. It's almost 4%. So this is pretty high. We're going to test for significance. All right. So this, if you look at it, this is row 5, column 5. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just going to eyeball it and pick those. And I'm going to see how far it deviates from the mean. 6.52%. Now I'm going to take a ratio, and it's basically kind of like a z-score. Um, this this difference, you know, how many standard deviations for the mean. So one thing to remember is that you need parentheses here and here. No, it's double parentheses because one is for the mean thing, but one you have to close these off. Because if you don't have the parentheses, you're not going to divide the whole thing by the standard deviation. All right. So if you look at it, this is kind of the score you're going to get. And that is 2.36. Now, if you know your critical values for the z-score, it's above 2. You know, for the z-score, it's 1.96. As sample size increases, the t-score, as t's distribution starts to look like the z, or the normal distribution. So it's going to be pretty close to that. This command QT, probability of 0.975. Remember, it's a 5% significance, but it's split in two for the two-tail, and it's because it's the upper, or it's the top point, uh, two five, or point zero two five of the distribution. Right, 47 degrees of freedom because there's 48 observations over here. You can run it and you can see that it is going to be 2.01. So this is significantly higher than average. All right, so we took a point just to see how it compares to the mean of the distribution. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use U.S. inflation data. I'm going to split it based on the period of disinflation that started um, in the 1980s, and uh, we're going to kind of see whether pre and post the, this policy. Uh, actually led to significantly different inflation. So what I'm going to take is inflation USP, right, and that is going to make uh, something called the US, all right, and it's basically just that one column. They don't have to worry about, you know, typing anything extra. Now I have these summary statistics already, right, you might want them handy just so you can have uh, a sense of what you're looking at. And then I'm also going to make a histogram with, uh, let's say, 11 uh, kind of 11 bins to it. All right. and, and why I do that is just one other, another way to get that number. All right. So if I print this histogram, we can see that it's not exactly uh, normally distributed. You know, It doesn't even look like a real T distribution. It really does have this tail. It's a little skewed, but we're going to ignore that for now. All right. And the US, the 1974 value was over here somewhere. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plot it as a time series. And so this is my command. I'm going to plot it. I'm not making a ts.plot. I'm not doing anything special. I'm not making a time series, which I can do elsewhere. Um, really, I'm making a line graph type of L. And this is what I'm saying. Inflation column 1 is the dates. So this is going to be my x-axis is the years. This is going to be my y-axis is the inflation rate. Again, it's a line. And I'm going to have no x label. All right. And if I plot it here, you can see that this is the inflation rate here. And only here, maybe it is low. You can you can split it into pre and post. Um, you know you got to see here that that somewhere here is the pre and post. And here's in 2008 recession is really the only time maybe there was deflation, but it was pretty close to zero. Right? What I'm going to do now though is I am going to kind of find this point and I'm going to split it here. Now um, one way to look at it is to simply look at the data, okay, because I can look and I can guess, is, is it 1980, is it 1981, I'm not sure. And what I did here was I took my original inflation series and I just keep column 1 and 5. 1 is the years, 5 is US, and that has them side by side. And yes, 2009 inflation, which is from 2008, is the only period of deflation in the sample. Right? So look here, 1980 is the first turning point. I could split it you know, at 12 or 11, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to say that this peak looks really nice. 
So I am going to put that in as my end. All right. Now, why did I choose this? One, I'm, I'm going to use this number over and over. Instead of having 11 at all these points and having to change it, if I change my country or change my sample, I change it once. This is my endpoint, 11. All right. And then every time, if I change the number, it's going to call the new number there. So it saves me a bunch of time and also potential mistakes if I miss one. All right, so uh, this helps me make one change instead of at least four changes if I do decide to use a different country. So here, here we have uh, the endpoint. We're going to go from 1 to 11, and then we're going to say, well, the post is 12, which is 11 plus 1, to the length, which is to the end. So 1 to 11, 12 to the end. Split it pre and post. All right. I'm also say why not add a vertical line? All right. So if I do this, it'll actually put a vertical line right at this point. So this is of inflation column one, which is years. This says put it in year 11. Okay, so the, the inflation one is years, end is the 11th year. So then I can make it a dotted line, which is what three calls, and then dark gray with the two, and that's just to make it look nice. If I do it here, you can see that this could be my pre and post. Okay, I'm going to estimate the mean to this point, I'm going to estimate the mean to this point, and I'm going to see how it differs. All right. And again, what if I said, well, I could change it to 12, right? Because inflation seems to fall, you know, a little bit this first year and more after. One change, and we'll do it all. all right. So here are the summary stats. All right. The mean, standard deviation for pre and post, as well as the length. So the short beginning is 11 long, and then 37 for the rest. The mean is much higher pre inflation targeting or inflation fighting, and lower post. All right, and so that's kind of what we expect, but we're going to test, is it significant? All right, so the two ways to do it, I just want to show both. One is just simply the R function. The other is step-by-step step using the formula. Uh, notice that when we do the formula, it's, it uses a, a square root method to make uh, the degrees of freedom. We're not going to calculate that here, but we do get the same T statistic answer both ways. All right, so here's T, T dot test. Here's one sample, here's the other, US pre, US post. And then the variances aren't equal, I'm saying, although, um, you know, you can, you know, the default, I believe, is false, but you could set it to true, assuming equal variance. Um, but I'm going to say they're not, because there's enough difference in there. All right, and then, come down to here, and then I'm going to run it. So remember, I make an object called T1, and then I call the object immediately. And so here's the test. It's a Welch test. T is 4.72. Degrees of freedom, again, this is a square root. And the p-value is extremely low. This is well below 0 .05, excuse me, 0 .05. Um, it's close, it's, you know, it's very, very significant. So this is the number we're going to really need right now, all right? Now, T2 is going to be by hand, all right? So we did it with the R formula. Um, now we're going to do the formula that we know from the book, all right? So I did it all in one line, but basically this is mean of pre minus mean of post, right? The difference in the means. And then if you remember, it's the square root of the sum of two adjusted variances, right? So the variance of pre, but you have to divide by the length, plus the variance of post divided by the length, right? So again, you can see it in a textbook. I'm, I didn't show the formula here, but this is the thing. I did it all in one line, right? If I run it, it works. 4.7236. It's a little bit less rounded, obviously, but it's the exact same number, right? And so, again, I always like to show the formula from the book and the the software result using the, the function, you do get the same result. It also tells you if you're doing it right or not. All right, so the t-test, we're basically asking the question, is the mean significantly different between pre and post 1980s high interest rate inflation fighting policy? The answer is yes, we did a t-test to do it. Did it two ways, and then the economic significance is basically that inflation is indeed lower now and post-1980 than it has been pre-1980. Now, one thing that you could do is you could rerun it, changing the end date from tw uh, 11 to 12, all right? But in lab, I'm going to have this assignment, which is uh, try the same thing, look for a break visually for Canadian inflation. Um, there's a split after 1990, should, should look for that one, and then just basically rerun the test.